Hey there, I'm here again with yet another tutorial. So this time I'm going to show you how you can use PHP My Admin. So this is a software that you use to manipulate MySQL or MySQL database. I'm going to call it MySQL for plenty of reasons because the workplace where I work right now use it um my sql and not my sql so that's the word is stuck in my mouth and uh, so we are going to refer to my sql you can call it my sql uh, if you want so let's get to the point uh, this is the official site of php my admin which is php my and you'll find version 4.2.1 and this is the php my admin that i have installed with the help of bitnami stack and as you can see this is the login screen where you have to type the root and admin password okay in your case it could be different it could be anything like root and the password that you have gave while installation right now I have a uh, mantis bug tracker WordPress here and to test database then there is one for Drupal and one for contact manager okay so as you can see I have these for now and after that we will see the current UI which is basically left hand side you will see the list of database and the tables that have manipulated recently this is shortcut launcher which has home logout query window help documentation and reload whenever you don't find any updates you just hit this reload and the update will appear so now let's check each tab one by one first is database where we are going to create and manipulate databases and second one is sql or sql where we are going to run the query or view the query results third is status which will show you the current status of our database how much memory is consumed how much failed attempts and how, how many others things that have failed about it and connection etc you will also find few other stats here in query statistics variable related info also you have monitor and advisor tab where you can monitor the live usage of the database Okay, so how much CPU is consumed, how much system memory and system swap is used, traffic, connection process. Okay, so that there is advisor as well. What should be done, what should be recommended for the database? Like here you have performance improvement recommended, like if fewer than 1000 queries are there, then what should be done etc etc you can read it and then think about it you can also run analyzer for this performance issue and other issues to that there is users tab where you will find the users here we have root then mahesh which is me and few other users okay and there is export tab here you can export the sql so all the database from the current server can be exported there is also import which is limited to 2 mb and in case of export you have 8 mb to 50 mb or depending on the database size then there are settings import and export related settings you can uh, adjust this settings in config php in setup script you can also run sql queries here 
and adjust the SQL query related settings, query box related settings, and all other settings that are important for PHP MAD. Then there is synchronize tab. This tab uh, I will leave it to you for later, so not for the beginners. Also for the application. Now I will check variables and cache sets. Here you are going to basically allocate the size or see how much is allowed. For example, date format can be edited. Right now it follows year, month and day. You can change it to day, month, year or month, day, year depending on the country uh, in which you are using format okay like this you can make some of the small changes that will apply to entire mysql server okay then there is care set okay so these are the characters and respective description okay then there are engines I will leave it that option for now which is the type of engine that we are currently using at my ISAM which is storage engine there are other type of storage engines as well but now we will stick with our basic tabs which is first is database now let's start by creating a test database let's name it test2 now collation is the encoding type for the database in our case we will choose utf8 unicode ci okay so our database is test2 utf8 and type is utf8 unicode ci now hit on create and you will find that in left hand sidebar the database is displayed now click on that database you'll find that it has its own settings like structure sql search query export import operation privileges routines now that we are here there is no table so nothing will appear so let's type test two number of columns three okay click on go now first should be the number and it should be integer then we'll keep it for primary and it should be auto in increment so whenever we are going to update something it should update itself then name this should be character so let's name it back and length should be 50 default none null not our out so let's see if we can make it unique or should be default should be null or none after that let's have name and surname Okay, have this for 20. Then we have everything set up. Okay. So number should be auto increment and primary key and name and some surname should be our part of table. Save it. Now you what you have here is a table. Click on it. It has storage engine as in or two select from test two limit 0 30 okay fair enough we have everything so you have column number name and so on. now you can go to SQL tab here you can select star from test where one so it is going to show you nothing right now right so let's insert something into it number 
should be one name should be Mahesh and surname should be Kami right and after that this should be number two name should be John Doe so click on this okay to insert to John Doe okay so now we will select star from test 2 and hit the go button okay so it is showing me error for now because let's test two okay so what do we have is Mahesh and second is yes. so we have our two entries here now we can also browse the database here so on browse tab you will find that number of entries are listed here now we can run additional SQL queries from here for insert update delete also for clear or you can just use this tab insert and you can insert the data that you want also you can export this table into SQL or CSV or JSON or PDF or any other format that you want reuse okay also you can import the data from similar table and then import here maximum size is 8 MB which you have to modify if the table or the database is large in size you can also perform additional operations like how you want to order it how you want to move the table from one to another or merge them copy them okay there are also some triggers right now we don't have any trigger but you can create new by clicking on add new trigger and then give it a name after that mention when event also what you want to perform for trigger also there is definer and then hit go Okay, so that's pretty much our intro to how you can create a table. First, we created a database, then we created a table, perform SQL queries, created some entries, also learned about insert, export, and other operations. Now, you can use PHP or any other language to access this table and manipulate from the code and accept the data from user or you can pass your own okay so this is our simple beginners tutorial where we learn how to create database also we learn how to create table how to perform queries how to do configuration settings and we also check the number of tabs that are useful for typical beginners level operations I'm sure you have learned something from this tutorial let me know if you want to learn more I will keep on adding similar videos and also go in depth with some of the topics like PHP my admin Ruby and few others so that's it for now